As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. John 9, 5. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm Don. I thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. Thank you, Lord God, for the peace and the grace that you've placed upon this word. I ask, Lord God, that we would walk in the light and not in the darkness. That we wouldn't be confused about who we are in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, hey, I just declare over you life and wholeness. Peace in His grace, in Jesus' name, glory. Praise His holy name. Glory. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. It's more tart than I like, but good all the same. Glory. Glory. Praise His holy name. Um, this morning, well, I go back to yesterday. Yesterday afternoon at work, while I was going through what I was going through, it was I was coming out of something and coming into the light, and I heard I heard the word obfuscation, <laughs> obfuscate, <laughs> and and that's not a that's not a normal word I use. So my ear perked up. The Lord was speaking something to me. Now I can't remember exactly what He was talking to me about, but it was something to do with darkness. He's talking to me about darkness, and he used that word, obfuscation. I think that's the way you say it. At any rate, uh, I went and looked the word up, and it was on the lines of what he was talking to me about. So this morning, the word is obfuscate. It means to confuse, bewilder, or stupefy, to darken. And that's what the enemy does. Jesus brought the light in the world that we would see. That we would begin to walk in the truth. That we would begin to apply the truth to our lives. That we would bring revival, life and truth. The light of God. That we would reflect that light. That we wouldn't have our foolish hearts darkened in our own vain imaginations about who God is. That's religion. You know, uh... <laughs> Basically, the Pharisees and the religious Jews thought that God was the law. I mean, he brought the law, but he wasn't the law because he sets us free. And some people might not agree with that, but that's all right. <laughs> but he wasn't the law. He brought the law. He spoke the law. He said, these things I want you to do just so I can prove that you can't live by them, so I can send my son to die for you so, you, so I can prove that you can't do those things because he is your righteousness. That's the truth. The truth of the matter is, is Jesus is alive and resurrected, seated at the right hand of the Father, and his enemies are going to be made a footstool underneath of him. Lord. And there's nothing we can do during our salvation. Glory. But the enemy's on the move. The enemy's on the move. I saw it this week. I saw how the enemy torments one man. And, and how prayer, I honestly believe how prayer begins to change the atmosphere around this man. And, and I believe that the Lord's calling him to freedom. And, and I just I thank God for that. I think He's calling us all to freedom, but we have to have a we have to have a mind that receives. We have to walk spiritually. We have to be spiritually minded. We can't have our Greek mindset and let it off <laughs> obfuscate our spiritual nature, not let it darken our spiritual nature, <laughs> not let let it bewilder us or stupefy us or confuse us, because God is not the author of confusion. But he is the author of peace, love, power, sound mind. You know, the fruits of the Spirit, my brothers and sisters, glory. And in Ephesians 6, 12, okay, and I use this scripture a lot this past week. It, it, it kept popping up into my mind. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. We, we, we're not wrestling against each other, really. There, there's things behind us. And if we're bound up, there's puppet masters. This man that I'm talking about is bound. But I believe that, that uh, the Lord's positioning him to become set free. I can see a time where this man gets set free. 
and all that he held dear to his life will be released from him. And, 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 that, and those strongholds will be revealed to him. And that he will overcome those things. I just declare that over him. I believe I can speak that over him. Lord. And uh, when, we, when, we, when we come into agreement with the enemy, we begin to believe lies. And when we begin to believe lies, our hearts begin to darken. We begin to become confused. We become bewildered. We don't know where to turn. I didn't have a lot of wisdom for this week. I hadn't gone through anything like I gone what I, what I went through this week, and and I needed to know from the Lord how to approach these things because I had thousands of different scenarios going through my mind. I mean, believe me, it, it was totally different than what I'm used to. I'm used to quick resolves in my life, and this wasn't looking like a quick resolve. And it was it was rough. It was rough. And I thank God that I was able to go through it in a godly fashion. My 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 testimony is not ruined because I I, I come into agreement with a lie and, and end up <laughs> becoming confused, bewildered, and stupefied. <laughs> and and I become darkened in my thinking about things. And I have more light now, more truth about some things than I've ever had, thanks to this week. Praise the Lord. And uh, in Romans 1, 18 through 22, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. You know, we have the, we have the truth. We know what the truth is. Jesus died to set us free. And we begin to suppress that and begin in our own vain imaginations to believe that we have the answers, that we know everything and everybody else, what they believe is wrong and we're going to make them see the things we see. <clears throat> well, we should allow the Spirit of God to open their eyes because they're going to see things just a little bit different. My revelation of Jesus isn't going to be the same as yours. Glory. Then we just become clones of each other. Okay, let me finish reading. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely the eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world, in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse, for though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened, claiming to be wise, they became fools. Now this is talking about the world, but it's also talking about the body. That there are certain aspects and certain belief systems that we have about God that, that obfuscate what the truth is, it, 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 it darkens the truth, it, it, it obscures the truth, and we need to begin to step out of those things. I'm not so much concerned about the world as I am about my walk, about my belief systems. The world's belief systems, the Lord can reveal to them who, who they are in Christ, who Christ is in them. <laughs> I'll let the Holy Spirit speak life into that word. Because <clears throat> I believe there's a little bit of God in every single human being. I heard the Lord tell me that. And it's just waiting to explode like a little atomic bomb in their lives. But uh, when Christ is revealed to somebody in the world that never knew him, and, and their deeds are exposed, they go one of two ways. They either run towards the light, or they find some more darkness to hide in. Because they can't stand the shame of their actions. But in our own <clears throat> but in our own walks, we have to work our own salvation out with fear and trembling. And in our own walk, we need to make sure that we don't begin to profess ourselves as being wise and, and all knowing about God. 
the enemy would like to darken our doors. Last night I had a dream that this woman was accusing me. You're not real. It's not real. You're not real. And I mean, she was angry with me and telling me that, that my walk wasn't real. And I mean, and finally I looked at her and I said, my walk is real. This is a paraphrase. I'm not saying it word for word. My walk is real. You're walking as an accuser. You're accusing me. Can't you tell you're accusing me? My walk is real. My walk belongs to the Lord. <laughs> and she was, she was standing in the role of an accuser. And, and I believe that's a religious spirit trying to come against me, you know, trying to subdue me because I don't live <laughs> like most believers live. I, I live in freedom. I don't use that freedom as toilet paper, by the way. <laughs> I walk in the Lord. I believe that, that we don't use our grace as, as uh, toilet paper. I stumble, I fall, I get up, and I... I say, yes, this happened. I'm not going to be ashamed of who I am in you, Lord God. Glory. Glory. Praise you. Praise your name. Let's not be dark in our thoughts about who we are in Christ. Let's, let's begin to walk in the light. Let our deeds be exposed. Those things that we do be exposed. Let, 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 let's bring them out in the light and let them be judged by the light. Let Jesus judge those things in us. Let's, let's see. I mean, I want to see all the goodness of God I can, but I want God to judge me. I want Him to qualify me. I want Him to make a righteous decision and determination about whom I am. And how my walk's going. I don't have to be ashamed of anything, and neither do you. <clears throat> but we have to allow the Holy Spirit to... To, to discern what we're doing so we can discern what we're doing because the Lord's going to let us know in many different ways. Glory, glory. And how he lets me know isn't going to be the same how he lets you know. Praise the Lord. Glory. And in John 8, 42 through 44, it says, Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God, and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he who sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. For you are your, of your father the devil. And your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because he, there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks of his own character. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Now, Jesus was talking to religious people because sometimes it, it, it's, it, it's like the last scripture I read. We become darkened and we become foolish in our imagination about who God is, about living by the law, about using the word Christian as an excuse to do atrocities about using our walk, the grace of God, as an excuse to walk in darkness. I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you on this. We need to begin to walk in the light as children of the light. We need to begin to see that we need a, grever, a, grever, a greater revelation. A hey, great in revelation, grever. <laughs> When I say grever, that means greater revelation. <laughs> um, we need a greater revelation of who we are in Christ Jesus. This isn't meant to put anybody on the spot or to make anybody feel condemned. This is meant to make us seek the Lord. You know, where in my life am I walking in darkness, Lord? What false beliefs and lies am I believing, Lord God? What am I speaking to other people that isn't true? And we need to begin to seek Jesus on these things. We need to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal these things and place a guard on our hearts, Lord God. Lord, Lord. We don't, we don't want to 
we don't want to be our sophisticators <laughs> for other people. We don't want to be a tool used to darken the Word of God. The Word of God is meant to bring life. It's never meant to bring anything but life. We're, we're, we're not judges. We're, we're not God Himself. We're sons and daughters. We're waiting for our inheritance in Christ Jesus. And we need to begin to see that. We need to begin to position ourselves and bow before that in humility. Glory. 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 I just want to say thank you for coming and sitting with me this morning. You're awesome. You are awesome. Just think about this. And let the Holy Spirit speak this to you. That you are alive. And wherever you go, you carry the Spirit of the living God with you. <clears throat> and there can be no death where the Spirit of the living God is. But our minds can overrule our spirits. If we allow that, if we choose to allow that, those are choices that we make. Let's begin to make a choice that will allow the Holy Spirit to enlighten us, that we'll begin to walk in a greater light, in a greater revelation that the Lord will give us. Begin to, begin to walk in forgiveness. Begin to release those things that hold us bound. Begin to tear down the strongholds. Begin, begin to get rid of those things in our lives. Begin to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal them to us more importantly. Those things. And then make a righteous judgment, a righteous decision, a righteous thought. Discernment over those things in our lives. If, if I would have crumbled this week in, in what was going on. <clears throat> My witness would have been ruined. And, and believe me, I had a lot of thoughts going through my head. I could do this, I can do that, I can do this, I can do that. I can, and, and it was, no, you can't do those things. Well, why can't I do those things? I didn't do anything wrong. Blah, 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 blah. The, the point of the matter is, is <clears throat> if, if we allow the Spirit of God to move in us in, un, in an unrighteous situation, the righteousness of God will be revealed. And, and you know, peace was restored. Peace was restored. I believe that peace was restored. And, and so the enemy didn't get a chance to darken my heart. And I can say that. Does that make me perfect? Man, I wish it did. No, it doesn't. Does that mean I've arrived? No, it doesn't. It just means that I've had some growth this week. And I've had a chance to have some maturity added to me. Yeah, and I feel, I, I feel like, you know, I feel blessed. I feel blessed to have gone through what I got, what I went through, what I gone through. Gone through what I've gone through. <laughs> I went through what I gone through. I feel blessed in it. Yeah, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for today's word. I thank you, Lord, that it's those that are going to hear this word that are going to get set free, Lord God. That, that you bring <clears throat> those in that, that need to hear this word, that need to be set free, that need to have light shed on areas of darkness in their lives. And I thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, get along with the Lord. Begin to praise Him. Begin to thank Him. Know that your life needs to be worshipped before Him. You worship God, must worship Him in spirit and truth. And the only way I believe that we can really worship God is in our lives. In our lives. Praise and worship, they're synonymous together, but they're not the same. The highest form of worship is to submit yourself to God and, and to walk in that. It's what we do that brings praise to the Father and worship and glory to glory. Yep, well, I'll, I'll play for one second. I get the guitar out. Then I gotta go. I'm running late this morning.
Word. 